Welcome to my video on imaginary numbers. So here we have the square root of negative 1. And for any of you who are not familiar with the square root of negative numbers or who are not familiar with imaginary numbers, the natural intuition to solve this would be finding some number uh, multiplied by itself that gives you negative 1. So let's try and do that. Let's try and find some number multiplied by itself that's going to give us negative 1. And we'll start with negative 1. Multiplied by itself, negative 1 times negative 1 is going to give us a positive 1, which is not okay because we need a negative 1. So let's try another number. This time let's try positive 1. Multiplied by itself, positive 1 times positive 1 is also equal to positive 1, which is not okay because we need a negative one. And I think many of you get the idea that it's impossible to find some number multiplied by itself that's going to give us a negative one. It's impossible to square any number and get a negative value. So this is why we use imaginary numbers. Um, it was decided uh, since there is no real number uh, that could solve the square root of negative one that this value is equal to the imaginary number I. And we can use this imaginary number i to find the value of any negative square root. Let's say we had the square root of negative 16. The square root of negative 16 is equal to the square root of positive 16 times the square root of negative 1, because positive 16 times negative 1 is equal to negative 16. And we know that the square root of positive 16 is equal to 4 and we know that the square root of negative 1 uh, is equal to i so the square root of negative 16 is equal to 4i so I think many of you get the idea of how we find the square root of a negative number so now let's talk about the different powers of i and let's start with a power of 0 so let's say we have i to the zero power. And anything with a zero in the exponent is always equal to one. So we know that i to the zero is equal to one. So now let's say we have i to the first power. Um, anything with a one in the exponent is just equal to itself. So i to the first is equal to i. So now let's say we have i to the second power, i squared. Well, we know the value of i is equal to the square root of negative 1 and if we square both sides of this equation on the left hand side we just have i squared and on the right hand side uh, the square and the square root cancel each other out and we're just left with negative 1 so we know the value of i squared is equal to negative 1 so now let's say we have i to the third power i cubed well, we know that i cubed is equal to i squared multiplied by i to the first power. If you just add the exponents, 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. And we know that i squared is equal to negative 1. So instead of writing i squared, we can put a negative 1. And the value of i to the first power is equal to i, so instead of i to the first, I'm just going to put i, and negative 1 times i is just equal to negative i. So now let's say we have i to the fourth power. Well, we know that i to the fourth is equal to i squared multiplied by i squared. If you add the exponents, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. And we know that i squared, once again, is equal to negative 1. So in place of i squared, I'm just going to put a negative 1 times another i squared, which is also negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is equal to positive 1. So I think some of you might see the pattern by now that every fourth power of i, uh, the pattern repeats itself. But let's prove this even more. Now let's say we have i to the fifth power. Well, we know that i to the fifth is equal to i to the fourth power multiplied by i to the first power. And we know 
that i to the fourth is equal to positive one. So in place of i to the fourth, I'm going to put a positive one. And we know that i to the first power is just i, and one times i is just equal to i. So once again, every fourth power of i, the pattern repeats itself. i to the zero power is equal to positive one. i to the fourth power is also equal to positive one. i to the first is equal to i, and i to the fifth is also equal to i. i squared is equal to negative one, so we know that i to the sixth power will be also be equal to negative one. i to the third is equal to negative i, so we know that i to the seventh will also be equal to negative i. So I hope many of you get the idea of how the pattern repeats itself, and this is a useful method that you could use so you don't have to memorize every single power of i. Uh, so let's say we have a really high power in the exponent. Let's say we have i to the 268th power. Um, if we use this pattern which I just showed you, it, it's going to take an extremely long time uh, to solve this. So in my next video, I'm going to show you how we can solve uh, this value of i with a really high power uh, without taking an extremely long time. So stay tuned for the next video. I really hope that you are enjoying these, and I will see you in my next one.